Hello there. In this final uh, part of this lesson, we're going to discuss the effect of heat on enzyme activity. It says something about setting up a graph, so here it is. Uh, enzyme activity against temperature. Temperature on the x-axis increasing this way. Enzyme activity, some measure of enzyme activity increasing this way. And uh, earlier in this lesson, we said there's how many enzymes out in enzyme land? Thousands. There are thousands. But even though there are thousands of enzymes, 100% of those enzymes have a graph of enzyme activity against temperature that looks like something like this. All right. Well, what can we say in general about the effect of temperature on enzyme activity? We can say as temperature goes up, we can say that enzymes do what? At least for a while. The enzymes work better and better and better. But then as temperature continues to go up, the enzymes work uh, less and less. Finally, it looks like they, they just kind of go belly up. They quit. Well, what are the reasons for this? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, what can we say right off the bat? Can we say this based on this graph? Can we say there is a temperature at which an enzyme works best. Can we say that? I think so. So whatever this temperature is, that would be a temperature at which an enzyme works best. A temperature at which an enzyme works best. And so, uh, and so what is that temperature? Well, I bet it's different for different enzymes. What do you think? Probably be nice if our enzymes uh, work best at what temperature? Maybe our body temperature, right? Yeah, and they do. Uh, but what about, uh, usually, uh, sometimes when I'm in my classroom, I'll point a fern over there on the side of the classroom. Don't have it right here right now. But uh, say, what about that fern? Would it be helpful for that fern if its enzymes work best at our body temperature? And uh, most students go, mm, and they'd be right. I don't think so, because the fern in my classroom is not at my body temperature, it's at a lower temperature. And uh, where do you find ferns usually? You find them where? In the shade. So I bet their enzymes work better at a lower temperature than ours. But this fact remains, for all those thousands of enzymes, there is a temperature at which an enzyme works best. Now let's explain the uphill and the downhill. First the uphill. It looks like as temperature goes up, at least for a while, enzyme activity uh, improves and improves. What could be doing that? Well, uh, referring back to our picture of Mr. Blue Guy and Mr. Red Guy. Does Mr. Blue Guy have eyes? And look around, nose or whatever. And, oh, there's a, there's a substrate. I got it. Oh, there's another one. Got it. Oh, oh, uh, there's no. No, 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 no. What's an enzyme? Mr. Blue Guy looks big and complicated, and he is big and complicated, but he's still just a what? It's still a protein molecule, just a molecule. And uh, what's it doing? It's following the rules. What are the rules? Well, if the cytoplasm that protein's in is warmer, what's Mr. Blue Guy going to be doing? He's going to be moving around faster. If the cytoplasm is colder, he's going to be moving around a little bit slower. And so, uh, what's the explanation for the uphill? As temperature goes up, both the enzyme and substrate molecules are moving faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And so, uh, increased molecular motion. That's the explanation. As temperature goes up, there is increased molecular motion. And so the molecules are moving faster. The enzyme molecules are moving faster. The substrate molecules are moving faster. And so uh, there's an increase in enzyme activity as the enzyme substrate molecules move faster and faster. Well, then you'd think, well, gee, maybe it should just keep on going up. How come you know, temperature goes up? Molecules are just going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. How come this doesn't just keep going up? Well, we learned something else about Mr. Blue Guy. Yeah, a while back. Uh, we talked about cooking an egg. What happens when you cook an egg to the proteins in the egg? They do what? They unravel. They denature, right? Denature. Yeah, so Mr. Blue Guy uh, he gets bounced around too fast. He does what? He goes, Woo! falls apart. The tertiary, tertiary and quaternary levels of structure, they all come unraveled. Is the active site there anymore? Does it have the right shape for the substrate? No. And so, 
the explanation for the down, the down slope is the enzymes denature. The enzymes denature. And so when we're talking about refrigerators and uh, freezers and all those kind of things, uh, where's a refrigerator? Down this way, right? And uh, so you put things in the refrigerator, it's a molecule slowdown. But what molecules are we trying to slow down in the refrigerator? The enzyme molecules. Which enzyme molecules? Well, there's enzymes within the food itself, part of the cells of the food, that continue to do their thing and will gradually deteriorate the food. But there's also uh, <clears throat> bacteria and fungi enzymes. You say, <clears throat> not my refrigerator. I, you know, I clean it every couple years or so. Uh, yeah, right. No, you probably clean it more often. I bet you do. But uh, it doesn't matter if you cleaned it every 10 minutes. When you open up a, uh, a, a plastic container on the counter and you're putting leftovers in it, in the air there are floating around, da 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 da, uh, bacteria and fungal spores, they float down on your food and you put the lid on, put it in the refrigerator and those bacteria and fungal spores, they, they go after it. And uh, you can slow them down but you can't stop them in the refrigerator section. Fact is, when you buy uh, a perishable food, uh, there's a date on it, right? Like milk or whatnot. And uh, what does that date mean? The date means used by this date or the enzymes are going to get this stuff. Does the stuff just go along perfect and on that day you go Pshut! No, it's a gradual process. And uh, you got to, you know, get anywhere near that date, you know, depending how much time was spent out on the counter instead of the refrigerator, etc. It might de deteriorate a little quicker or maybe not so quick. So that date is a guideline, but the enzymes are working away the whole time. Uh, what about the freezer section of the refrigerator? Do things deteriorate by enzyme activity in the freezer section? No, they do not. Now, you may be thinking of something called freezer burn. Freezer burn is something totally different. It's a drying out. If stuff in the freezer isn't wrapped very tight, there's air between the uh, wrapping and the, uh, the frozen item, the, uh, there's an evaporation into the air, the airspace, a drying out, rather, into the airspace in between the frozen item and the wrappers. Freezer burns are drying out. You can cut that section off and the rest is fine. However, deterioration or decomposition by enzyme activity does not occur in the freezer. Let me tell you why. The molecules have stopped moving. Is that right? Well, uh, does anybody have a freezer anywhere near absolute zero? If you do, you spent a whole lot more money in your freezer than I spent on mine. No, the molecules are still moving. Our freezer section is way above absolute zero. What's the explanation for no enzyme uh, activity, no deterioration by enzyme activity uh, in the freezer? Well, in the freezer, everything's frozen solid. And how do we think of the motion of solid molecules vibrating in place? And so, what are the enzyme and substrate molecules doing in the freezer, they are vibrating in place and uh, they can't get, one can't get to the other. They're just sitting there as long as nobody leaves the freezer door say, open. So what can we say? Why doesn't uh, decomposition by enzyme activity occur in the freezer? Because both the, both the enzyme and substrate molecules are locked in solid ice, vibrating in place. Yes, they are. What was that again? Both the enzyme and substrate molecules are locked in solid ice, vibrating in place, can't get to each other, so no enzyme, no deterioration by enzyme activity. All right, I think we got it. All right, that's it for now.